Well, it, as I said, is a Friday and we, over the course of the last, oh, 30 years or so, seem to have a trend going on this day of the week, and that is that we visit with Sean McBride, the movie guy. No exception this week. He's talking about some new movies that are out, and he's, I don't know, for some reason, Swing and a Miss is one of his descriptions of part of the movies this week, or maybe it's all of them. Let's find out as we check in with Sean McBride, the movie guy. You're going on a journey, a journey through memory. All you have to do is follow my voice. In Reminiscence, Hugh Jackman plays a private investigator who helps his clients recover lost memories. It's a stylish, sci-fi, film noir love story that looks great, but thanks to a convoluted script, it never really succeeds. I think we had secrets. Everybody has secrets. It's our house. But backwards. The Night House is a creepy haunted house flick, the story of a widow digging into her husband's shady past. Now this one's got a muddy screenplay as well, but a good central performance and nice production design make this into a pretty good little horror thriller. Someone killed a friend of mine because of a contract he completed years ago. Oh yeah? The protege stars Maggie Q as a lethal assassin who vows to avenge the death of her mentor. Now this is a stylish action film from the producers of John Wick, but the protege doesn't quite live up to that standard. Come on, pups, Adventure City's in trouble. The Paw Patrol movie brings the toddler TV hit to the big screen. Hey, if you've got five-year-old kids, you probably already know about these cute characters and their mild brand of kid-friendly fun. So may we Finally, Annette, the opening night film from this year's Cannes Film Festival. The story of a stand-up comic who falls in love with an opera singer, and together they have a baby, which is played by a wooden puppet. Look, I generally love movie musicals, but Annette is a self-indulgent mess. And that's what's new this week at the movies. I'm Shami Bride, the movie guy. I hate to say it out loud in front of him, but this shouldn't take long. <laughs> it's uh, 831. That's kind of what we have on the menu today when yeah. it comes for movies. I mean, you know, as, as an adult looking for entertainment, I, I you know, okay, maybe action genre, uh, maybe a little bit of, a, of the horror thing. So well, there's a little bit of something for everybody, but none of it's still. All of this week's films, all of them, uh, they tried something interesting. I appreciate that. The ones that were a little closer into genre, as opposed to trying to be an arty film, right. they succeeded more. Right. But boy, there's a lot of stuff that didn't work this week. But so. it seems like it's a lot of th things that are in specific lanes, as you uh -huh. mentioned. Right. They're, you know, they're not trying a whole lot other than to attract a specific audience. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so for example, I mean, I don't know where you want to start, but uh, Paw Patrol, which we'll take five seconds to talk <laughs> yeah. about. Because if, if you're a mother who has a child of that age, you know, five-year-olds, you know all about Paw Patrol. I have a friend who absolutely loves, you know, she never got the, um, the Paramount Plus. She loves Star Trek. She, that didn't get her there. She loves um, RuPaul's Drag Race. That didn't get her to Paramount Plus. But Paw Patrol, her, her son, made sure she got pa uh, right. you know for right. that so it's in theaters but it's also on paramount plus look it is what it is yeah, exactly so Come on. more of what you see on television every day but in longer format but in exactly. a longer format yeah. a longer story all right so. let's move on to the next one. so let's try a reminiscence okay. uh, which is a hugh jackman um, looks good on paper yeah, and it's, it's interesting. It really wants to be like a Chinatown meets water world. It's set in the near future where ocean levels have risen, so Miami is kind of underwater here. He's a private investigator. His job is to help people. He's got a science fiction doohickey that helps them go back into their minds and, and recover memories that they can fill the memory as well as remember it. And uh, he falls in love with this woman who walks in just asking him to help her find her keys. And uh, then she disappears. And it's kind of a sci-fi, film noir, love story. And it's, uh, it's Rebecca Ferguson there and, and Hugh, uh, Hugh Jackman and Thandie Newton, who I think is very good in this one. Visually, quite impressive. Uh, structurally, story-wise, kind of all over the place. And again, this is one of those where if you don't want to go to the theater, not a problem because HBO you've got HBO Max, Max mm -hmm. it's going to be in your house. Exactly. Right? Right. So I, I think people take risk on these movies Yeah. because yeah. it doesn't cost you anything than what you're already well, paying. And interesting, this is a film that they had to pay Hugh Jackman like 
tens of millions of dollars right. to get it out of theaters, and he probably makes money on that because it probably would have bombed in theaters. All right. So, uh, Night House? The Night House, which is probably the best of the bunch here. This is Rebecca Hall, another Rebecca this week, and she is very good in this, in a very stylish haunted house film. It kind of falls apart at the end, but boy, visually it's pretty cool. She's a woman, a school teacher, her husband commits suicide, and she doesn't know why. They've been living in a house that he's the architect, he built this house, and so she's kind of exploring his past, and she realizes he was big time into the occult and what's going on here, and it's a ghost story, or is it something more sinister than that? And then she finds out, is there a second house? Uh, does she? Does he have a second life? You know, it's a, it's a pretty good little horror haunted house. All right, Protégé will appeal to the action fans, right? Yeah, and Maggie Q fans and stuff. And it's also Samuel L. Jackson and uh, Michael Keaton. It's it's an okay action film. It's got some good you know action stuff. I think Maggie Q should have been a much bigger star by now, but. Um, Boy, you know, it wants to be the uh, John Wick with the female set. It wants to be a whole bunch of things. It's kind of got some romance. It's got some, and it's romance, a 30-year difference between Maggie Q and, and uh, Michael Keaton there. Stuff that's a little weird. But, you know, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, how many times have we seen this, though? They're still searching for that female action star. Yeah. And it's coming to Scarlett Johansson, yeah. we, you know. I mean, Maggie Q obviously on. has the chops to do that. So. Right, yeah. right. All right, and then we'll finish up with Annette, Annette, which may be the most bizarre of all of them, but has probably gotten the most acclaim. Yeah, yeah. Rock opera. I love moving musicals. And I saw some friends who had gone to the Cannes Film Festival and came out saying, oh, this is your Oscar winner, and this is an Oscar winner for Adam Driver. And I do think that Adam Driver does a very fearless performance. But boy, I really did not like this movie at all. This one's on Amazon Prime. Uh, Adam Driver, uh, like I said, fearless performance, but he's singing, and Adam Driver's not a singer. And so it sounds kind of like karaoke that you get every weekend. Uh, you know, it's passable, but there's nothing special. Um, yeah, exactly. It's a weird film. It uh, They have a baby, he and, um, you know, it's uh, Marianne Cotillard plays the opera singer, he has a baby with her, and the baby's played by a wooden puppet, and the puppet is creepy, and it reminded me more of Annabelle, the horror movie, than anything else, and, um, boy, I just think it kind of is all over the place. I don't think the music works. I don't think the singing's good. I don't, yeah, I just... Hey, you're never going to get on the jury if you keep talking I, that exactly. way. Your, your can's future is very yeah, limited, buddy. Yeah, I blew it here right You may now. be Sean the movie guy, but I don't see you sitting on <laughs> that French jury <laughs> yeah. anytime soon. Keep talking like yeah. that. You know, like I say, it was very divisive it's too in Cannes, so... Yeah. Yeah. It can't be weak. So. All right, so that, that's your weekend. And again, you've got uh, choices. You don't have to go to the movie theaters. A lot of these mm -hmm. are going to be at home, and if they're not, they will be shortly. Exactly. Give it a month and a half. They'll exactly. All be there. <laughs> Plenty to watch on a hot weekend. All right. Thanks, Sean. All Always right. good to see you. Sean McBride, the movie guy, uh, can be seen every Friday right here on the morning show.